Okay, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here. KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2021 in person. theCUBE is here, I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Nicholson, my co-host and cloud analyst. Man, it's great to be back uh, in person. We also have yeah. a hybrid event. We've got two great guests here, the founders of, of, of Deep Fence, uh, Shayam, Krishna Swamy, co-founder and CTO, and Sadeep Lahaini, founder hey, and CEO. Hey everyone. Hey everyone. Great to have you on. This is a super important topic. As yeah. cloud native is crossed over, everyone's talking about it, mainstream, blah, blah, blah. But security is driving the agenda. Yeah. You guys are in the middle of it, cutting edge yeah. approach yeah. and news. Well, absolutely, yeah. like, like we were talking about, John. We are operating at the intersection of the awesomeness, right? Open source, security, and cloud, cloud native, essentially, absolutely. And uh, today is a super exciting day for us. We're launching something called Threat Mapper, Apache V2 completely open source. Think of it as an X-ray or MRS scan for your cloud. Scan, you know, visualizes cloud at scale, all of the modalities. Essentially, we look at cloud as a continuum. It's not a single modality. It's containers, it's Kubernetes, it's VMs, it's serverless. All of them coexisting side by side. That's how we look at it. And Threat Mapper essentially allows you to visualize all of this in real time. Think of Threat Mapper as something that you that, that takes over the baton from the CI CD. Mm -hmm. When the lift, shift left gets over, that's when the threat mapper comes in picture. So yeah, super excited. It's like really gives that developer and the teams, ops teams, yeah. visibility into kind of health, statistics yeah. of the cloud, but also, as you said, it's not just software mechanisms. Yeah. The cloud is evolving, yeah. new services being turned on and off, no one even knows what's going on sometimes. That's correct. This, this is the really the hidden problem, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. The basic problem is, I mean, I was just talking to you know, a journalist earlier this morning, is 270 billion plus public cloud spent, John, 270 billion plus, even 3 billion, 30, uh, 300 billion they're saying, right? Uh, projected revenue. And there is not even a single community tool to visualize all the clouds and all the cloud modalities at scale. Let's start there. That's what we sort of decided. You know what, let's start visualizing everything out there and then look for known badness, which is the vulnerabilities, which still remains the biggest attack vector. Sure, tell us what's under the hood. How does this all work? Cloud scale, is it a cloud service, managed service, it's code? Take us out, take us through product. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Uh, so, so, but before that, right, there's one small point that Sandeep mentioned and which I'd like to elaborate here is, right, he spoke about the whole cloud spend being such a large volume, right? If you look at the way people look at applications today, it's not just single cloud anymore. It's multi-cloud, multi-regions, across diverse clients, right? Yeah. What is the solution to look at what my infrastructure is going on? That is a missing piece here, and that is what we're trying to tackle, and that is where we're going as open source. Now, coming back to your question, right? How does this whole thing work? So we have a completely on-prem model, right? Where customers can download the code today, install it, we, build, we give binaries to, and shortly, just as the exciting threat map announcement that came out today, you're going to see some more exciting announcements that's going to make a lot more easy for folks out there, out there. Yeah, that, that's what. It is. So, so how does this, how does this all fit into security as a microservice? I mean, your, <laughs> your your vision of that. Well, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I'll tell you, this has to do with the, one of the container conferences. I was sort of when I was trying to get an idea, trying to shape the whole vision. Really, right? Hey, what about security as a microservice? I would go and ask people. They would say that sounds that makes sense. Everything is becoming a microservice, really. So, what you're saying, Sandeep, is you're going to deploy one more microservice just like I deploy all of my other microservices, and that's going to look after my microservices. That computes, that makes logical sense. Essentially, that was the genesis of that terminology. So defense essentially is deployed as a microservice. You go to scale it, deploy it, operate it just like you do your microservices. So no code changes, no other tool chain changes. It, it, it just is yet another microservice that's going to look after you. Yeah. Talk, talk about the, oh, go ahead. So there's one point I would like to add here, which is something very interesting, right? The whole concept of microservice came from, if you remember the memo from Jeff Bezos that everybody's going to be a microservice will be fired. Yeah. That gave rise to a very conventional, unconventional way of thinking about your applications. At Deep Friends, we believe that security should be now, you should bring the same unconventional way of thinking to security. Your security is all bottom up. No, it has to start top down. So your applications are microservice, your security should also be a microservice. So you need a microservice for a microservice, a security for the security. Exactly. You're starting to get into a paradigm shift where you're starting to see the API economy, the Bezos and exactly. the Amazon uh, you know, philosophy and, 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 uh, and their approach go mainstream. So what I got to ask you, because this is a trend we've been watching and reporting on, mm -hmm. the actual application development process is changing from uh, the old school you know, life cycle, 
yeah. software defined life cycle, yeah. Yeah. to now you've got machine learning and bots, you have AI now, you have people are building apps differently. Yeah. And the speed of which they want to code yeah. is high, and yeah, then absolutely. other teams are slowing them down. So I've heard security teams are screwing people over a oh. couple days. Oh my God, I wait five days? No, it used to be five weeks, now yeah. it's five that's days. True. They think that's, that's progress. Yeah. Yeah. They want five minutes, yeah. the developers in real time. So this is a real deal. Absolutely, you know what? Shift left was a good thing. It's still a good thing. It helps you sort of figure out the issues early on in the development uh, life cycle, essentially, right? And so you start weaving in security early on and it stays with you. The problem is we are iterating so frequently, you, you end up with a few hundred vulnerabilities every time you scan, oftentimes a few thousand, and then you go to runtime and you can't really fix all these thousand vulnerabilities, you know? So this is where, so there is a little bit of a gap there, you see yeah. saying? If you look at the CI/CD cycle, the, the infinite circle that they show you, right? You've got the far left, which is where you have the, the SaaS tools, yeah. Snake and all of that, yeah. and then you've got the center, where, which is where you hand off this to ops, and then on the right side you've got SecOps. Defense essentially starts in the middle. It says, look, I know you've had thousand vulnerabilities, okay, but at runtime, I see only one of those packages is loaded in memory, and only that is getting traffic. You go and fix that one, because that's going to hurt you. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. that gap is what we're doing. So you start with the left, we come in in the middle and stay with you throughout, you know, till, till the whole, uh, CICD, yeah. Well, that, 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 that touches on a subject. What are, the, what are the changes that we're seeing? What are the new threats that are associated with containerization? And kind of coupled with that, look back on traditional security methods and how are, how are traditional security methods failing us with those new requirements that come out of the microservices and containerized world? It's a, it's, so having, having been at FireEye, I'll tell you, uh, I've worked on their Windows products. There. And Juniper. And, and Juniper. very, very <laughs> deeply involved yeah, in OS, OS yeah. 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's true. That's and true. in fact, you know what, earlier at a company, we even sold our product to Palo Alto. So having been around the space really, I think it's, 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 a, it's a foregone conclusion to say that attackers have become more sophisticated. Of course they have. Yeah. It's not a single attack vector which gets you down anymore. It's not a script kiddie somewhere sitting who's just sending one malicious HTTP request and exploiting. No. These are multi-vector, multi-stage attacks. They, they evolve over time and space. Yeah. You know, and now what happens is the attackers are evolving over time and space. Vulnerabilities are piling up, right? And on the other side, you've got the infrastructure which is getting fragmented. What I mean by fragmented is it's not one data center where everything will look and feel and smell similar. Yeah. It's containers and Kubernetes and serverless and all of that stuff is hackable, right? So you've got that big yeah. shift happening there. You've got attackers. How do you build visibility? So in fact, initially we used to we would go and you know speak with uh, the DevSecOps practitioners say. Hey, what is the core issue? Is it that you don't have enough scanners to scan? Is it that at runtime, what is the main problem? It's lack of visibility, yeah. lack of observability throughout the life cycle, as well as throughout these heterogeneous modalities that you've yeah. got. And the fact that the yeah. attackers know that too, yeah. they're exploiting exactly. the fact that they can't see, they're blind. Yeah. It's exactly. like, you know, we're trying to land a plane that flew yesterday and you think it's landing tomorrow. It's all like lagging, yeah, right? Exactly. So, so I got to ask you, because this is, comes up a lot, because mm -hmm. remember we were in our 11th season with theCUBE, mm -hmm. and I remember conversations going back to 2010. The cloud's not secure, you know. This is before everyone realized, shit, the cloud's better than, than on-premises, if you have it right. So a trend has emerged, I want to get your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. What percentage of the hacks are because the, the, the attackers are lazier than the more sophisticated ones? Because you see two buckets. I'm going to get. I'm going to work hard to get this, or I'm going to go for the easy, low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. And most people have just a setup that's just low-hanging fruit for the hackers, yeah. versus some sort of complex or thought-through programmatic cloud system. Because now cloud's actually better yeah. if you do it oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So the more sophisticated the environment, the harder it is for the hackers, yeah. aka Bob Wire, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. What level do we cross over? When does it go from the script kiddies to the the, yeah, the nation I mean, states and yeah, script kiddies kind of like okay, I'm gonna go get the S3 bucket or yeah, you know yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's like levels of like yeah. laziness. Yeah. Okay, I'm in. Yeah. 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 Versus, I'm really gonna orchestrate and spearfish, social engineer, yeah. the, 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 the more sophisticated, economy-driven ones. Yeah. yeah. I think you know what, this attackers, the, the hacks aren't being conducted the way they were conducted five years ago. You know what I'm saying? They're being outsourced. There are sophisticated teams who are building exploits, isn't it? Yeah. This is the whole industry up there. Yeah, it's an right? economy. And yeah, yeah, exactly. The nation, it's an economy, really, yeah. right? So, um, the known badness, or the known attacks, I think we have had tools. We have had the 
old tools, signature based tools, we should know, look for certain payloads and say this is bad, I know it, right? Really, the stuff really starts sort of uh, getting out of control when you have so many sort of different modalities running side by side. Yeah. So much, so much moving attack surface, it's ever evolving. You never know that you've scanned enough. Yeah. Because you never have. Because you just push the code. You know so, what we've been covering, yeah. so we've been covering um, IronNet, Kim, uh, retired General Keith Alexander's company. Yeah. They have this Iron Dome concept where it's more collective sharing. Um, how do you see that trend? Because I can almost imagine that the open source community is going to love what you guys got. They're yeah. going to probably feed on it like it's nobody's business. But then you start thinking, okay, we're going to be open and you have a platform approach, not so much a tool-based approach. Yes. Because there's too many tools, we all know that. When does it we cross over to the nirvana of like real security, sharing real-time telemetry data? Yeah. Well, absolutely. And I want to answer this in two parts, John. The first part is really, see, a lot of this wisdom is already in the community. Yeah. It, it's a tribal knowledge. It's there in form of feeds, in form of GitHub tickets, in form of, you know, a lot of these things. What we're really doing with Threat Mapper is we are consolidating that and giving it out as a sort of platform that you can use. I like to for call free, it as a, for free. For, for free. free. This is a part she yeah, We're yeah. never going to monetize this, and we are certain about yeah, that's this. That's awesome. What we're monetizing instead is you have, like I said, the X-ray or MRI scan of the cloud, which tells you what the pain points are. This is for free. This is public collective good. <laughs> this is a Apache Vito, this is for free. It's shocking that it took this long to get to that point, by the way, in, in this discussion. This is free, this is free. Yeah, yeah, no, this is, uh, this is, the security is, is, security is collective good, yeah. right? And if you're doing open source, community-based, you know, programs like those, this is for the collective good. What we do is, and look, this whole of the set mapper is going to be open source. We're going to make it a platform, and our commercial version, which is called Threat Striker, which is where we have our core IP, which is basically, think yeah. about this way, right? You, you figured out all the pain points in, in using Threat Mapper, this is for free, and now you want the remedy for that pain. Be it a targeted defense, be it targeted quarantining of those tainted workloads and all of that stuff, and that's where our IP is. What we really do there is, we say, look, you figured out the attack surface using Threat Mapper. Now I'm going to use Threat Striker to protect that attack surface. So no is that free, not, not free too, or is that going to be for pay? Oh, that's for pay. Okay, that's, so that's, that's your business model. That's our business model. So you bring model. the goodness yeah. to the party, yeah. the yep. goods to the party, yeah. share, yeah. that collective, see where that goes, yeah. yep. and the striker on top is how you guys monetize. Absolutely. That's good. And that's okay. where we do some uniquely novel things. I would want to talk about that if, 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 if you know, probably for 30 seconds or so. Unique things we do in industry, which is basically being able to monitor what comes in, what goes out, and what changes across time and space. Because look, most of the modern attacks evolve over time and space. Right? Yeah. So you're going to be able to see things like this. Hey, here is Apache Struts, which has a vulnerability. Threat Mapper told you that. Threat Striker, what it does is it tells you Apache Struts has a vulnerability, I know that. And somebody is sending a malicious HTTP request, which has a malicious payload. And you know what, tomorrow there's a file system change and there is an outbound connection going to some funny place. That is the part that we are monetizing. Yeah, you give away the tool to identify the threats and sell the hammer. Exactly. Yeah. Be unconventional like. about giving you protection. Awesome, I love you guys, love this product, love how you're doing it. I got to ask you yeah. to define, what is security as a microservice? <laughs> <laughs> so, security as a microservice is a deployment modality for us. So defense, what, it, what defense has is one console. So defense is currently self-hosted by the customer within their infrastructure. Going forward, we'll also be launching a SaaS version, a cloud version of it. But what happens as part of this deployment is they're running the management console, which is the GUI, and then a tiny sensor which is collecting telemetry, that is deployed as a microservice. You see know what I'm saying? So you've got 10 containers running, defense is 11 containers. That's, that's an it on the microservice. And it utilizes uh, eBPF you know, for tracing and all of that stuff, yeah. Awesome. Well, I think this is the beginning of a shift in the industry. You're starting that's to correct. see DevOps and cloud native technologies become the operating model. That's Not correct. just Dev, DevOps are now in play and infrastructure as code, which is the the ethos of uh, cloud generation That's true. is security as code. That's true. That's Absolutely. what you guys are doing. Yep, yep, Thanks yep. for coming on, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Breaking news here in the queue, obviously great stuff. Open source continues to grow and win in the new model, collaboration. This is the queue, bringing you all the coverage. Day one of three days. I'm John Furrier, your host with Dave Nicholson. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much.